So today, so instead of chess, I kind of want to introduce to you a book called Mathematical Sorcery. It's a little advertisement. And, well, this sorcery part is really kind of what interests me. Well, the math part, obviously, is kind of what makes this more appropriate for this channel. But the sorcery part, it makes you think, like, a lot. Like, it's kind of, it's very interesting. So even though I'm on page, I'm still on page 42, I just started reading it a few days, uh, like, today. Well, like, I've experienced a lot. And, well, first, in this first chapter, it basically talks about the, like, the history of math from where, you know, math started as counting numbers or just symbols, like um, what we would now call the greater than or equal to sign would be the number 10, or it would be the number one in the Cimmerian language, which is way back in, I think like 30,000 years ago, that is in this book. And some things are actually very crazy and absurd, which is actually a lot of what makes you think. So, for example, if you just, pardon me, I'm going to flip to that page. I'm going to read you two arguments that sound completely absurd, but if you think about them, they actually kind of make some logical sense. So, there's this guy called Zion, Zeno, and he's this guy that thinks, I won't call him a maniac, but like whatever you like whatever he's like but he thinks that motion is impossible and like length is impossible so, like me moving right now it's an illusion of our senses so so what this is it's like his argument says that basically an arrow must go halfway to the target before it can reach the target that means well before it can reach the target it has to reach the halfway mark right and then before it can reach the halfway mark, it has to reach the quarter way mark, and then the eighth way mark, and then the thirty, uh, and then the sixteenth mark, and so on and so forth. So that resolves that we can keep cutting this distance. We can keep cutting this distance in half infinity times. So basically, well, if you shoot an arrow, it just hits the target in like I don't know, say five, three seconds. So well, if there's infinity lengths, like we can just keep cutting this segment up into infinity pieces well if it can travel infinity pieces in a finite amount of time it doesn't make any sense right like how do you travel like in say an infinity amount of distances in three times in three seconds or something like that and like it sounds absurd right like like how like like why do you think that's true like but like you think about it it's kind of it kind of makes a little bit of sense right like you know like, my hand moves from here to here, I have crossed the, say, I don't know, 32nd, 16th, 8th, quarter, half, and half, halfway mark. And then, like, if you keep dividing that, I've crossed infinity different line segments from, from here to here, but in a finite amount of time. How is that possible, right? So I'm going to leave you to think about that while um, I look at the second argument, which also, again, makes some sense um yeah so basically it, it argues that well a line we know it has infinity points right well why does it have infinity points because these points have no length and no width right like that's what defines a point right of basically a place that has no area what well, again have no area means zero length zero width well if a line is made up of infinity of these points that have zero length and zero width. That means this line has zero length and zero width, which means how can it cover distance? If this line goes on forever, but it has infinity zeros, that's just zero length, which means even though it looks like it's, you know, it goes on forever, that line goes on forever, motion is this, I guess, totally sophisticated argument says against it. It proves that this line, or it thinks that this line has basically no space. And um, one argument that went against that 
was that, well, we were made of, of atoms, right? This whole world is made of atoms with, like, you know, a, some electrons revolving, revolving around those atoms. Well, for an electron to move from one atom to the other, science has proven that it doesn't just, you know, move from one place to another from, you know, like, you know, like, like if there's, like, if there are two electrons and they start orbiting, and then this electron wants to go to this electron because of, you know, electric forces and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't just move through the space between the two electrons. Like, what happens is it disappears inside this, this, this shell. So, like, if this is the electron, like, the electron itself disappears and then simultaneously pops up in the other, like, atom. So, like, it's like, this has three electrons, two electrons, and then... Uh, or three other electrons and then start orbiting. And then in like, I don't know, like, a, I guess instantly, um, this becomes two electrons and this, be, uh, this becomes two electrons and this becomes four electrons instantly. So technically, when on my hand is moving through the air, basically all of the electrons from my hand are, you know, infinitely fast transporting from one atom to another. Like all my electrons are constantly moving through like each atom, like my hand just went through all of those, like it just popped up through like all of those atoms and electrons. It kind of sounds a little absurd too. So I leave you to think about the theorems. And if you by chance have this book, I highly suggest that you read it.